Four and a half years ago, Crowley unveiled the Ender 3, the 3D printer that would take the budget desktop space by storm. In 2018, I called it the best beginner 3D printer, and it has been the gateway printer for many, many people I've met over the past four years. Just about every competitor in that price range has made their version of it, and even Crowley has ridden the popularity of the Ender 3 with something like 10 variants of the printer, with a new one coming out just about every month. There is no denying that the Ender 3 is showing its age and that there are better options out there around the same price point. However, just a couple of months ago, I still picked up a used Ender 3 Pro off of eBay for around $100. And earlier this year, I bought another Ender 3 Pro from Micro Center. In today's video, I'm going to share my current thoughts on the Ender 3 in 2022, talk about why I picked up those two Ender 3s this year, and show off some of my absolute favorite Ender 3 conversions and upgrades that are out there. So with all that being said, and without further ado, let's get right into today's video. Thank you to Voxel PLA for sponsoring today's video. Voxel PLA is aiming to make 3D printing more accessible with a reliable and affordable filament. This filament has been used exclusively in a 150 machine print farm and is now available for purchase. They currently offer their PLA Plus in black, white, gray, red, and blue with additional colors coming next year. My personal favorites are Firetruck Red and Cool White. Voxel PLA is priced at $16.99 per kilogram and at two spools, shipping is free within the US. Bulk discounts for 10 or more spools are also offered and there is a dedicated form available for this. Links will be in the description to voxelpla.com so that you can find out more or pick up your own. At the time of recording, the original Ender 3 is going for $190 on Amazon. If you're able to spend a bit more, there are plenty of similar yet better options out there that include things like auto bed leveling, direct drive extruders, and powder coated PEI flex plate systems. Personally, for $20 less, I would opt for the KP3S over the Ender 3 or Ender 3 Pro, especially if you're planning on leaving the printer stock. If you do want to stick with the Ender 3 line, the S1, although double the price, has been a very reliable 3D printer for me and comes with a lot of those nice upgrades. For the Ender 3, the Ender 3 Pro, and the Ender 3 Pro V2, the primary reason I would see someone getting one of those printers today would be cost, the fact that they really want a printer that they can tinker with, or they've got just some serious plans as far as a conversion or just some sort of upgrade path planned for the printer. Part of the Ender 3 being so inexpensive and really better than any 3D printer that was around its price point when it launched made it the perfect printer to mod. The community that formed around the Ender 3 style 3D printers was and is one of the biggest that I've seen in the 3D printing space. With that is an insane amount of videos, posts, and documentation for just about anything you will ever run into. As someone that really enjoys building and modding things, the Ender 3 line of machines has no shortage of upgrades and mods provided by both manufacturers as well as the community. 3D printing is not a one shoe fits all by any means and there are lots of people out there that also have zero desire to do any tinkering or any modding and just want a 3D printer that will print the things they throw at it. There are plenty of days that I feel the exact same way, which is why I really enjoy having 3D printers that I just sort of leave as is. Right now that would be the Bamboo X1 Carbon or like my Prusa MK3S and I also really enjoy having the other 3D printers that I'm building or modding such as the Vorons, any of the Ender 3 line up and most recently the rat rig that I built. For the most recent Ender 3 Pro, which is actually this one right here, I purchased it on eBay as an open box return for $100 shipped. And the reason I went that route was I knew that I had plans to upgrade just about everything on it from the extruder and the hot end to the main board to the motion system. And so I really just needed frame power supply that worked, stepper motors that worked, and you know some of the other main components. And if you are planning on getting a Ender 3 or something like that, and your goal is that you have a big mod in mind, that is a really awesome route to go versus spending you know, double the price getting one brand new off of Amazon when you're going to be ripping out all of, or the majority of the parts before you even get started. Next, let's cover some of my favorite Ender 3 conversions. I have firsthand experience with a lot of these, and if I haven't actually used them myself, I know people that have used them or I've just done a ton of research about the mod and the project itself. In no particular order, the first one on this list is the Ender 3 to Switchwire conversion. This essentially turns your Ender 3 into a Voron Switchwire, giving you all the bells and whistles of a belted Core XC motion system with linear rails, the stealth burner or afterburner tool head, and optional enclosure. 
I don't have the Ender 3 to Switchwire conversion. I just went ahead and built the LDO Switchwire, but I have really loved the Switchwire and it has done a ton of ABS and ASA printing for me over the last couple of months. So if your goal is to be able to print a lot of ABS or ASA parts, maybe for other Voron builds or just other mods, it is a great mod to go with. I know quite a few people that have done the Ender 3 to Switchfire conversion and my buddy Steve over at Steve Builds did a entire live stream of the process and the end result just looks absolutely gorgeous. I'll have that link down below in the description as well as to the GitHub and really anything else I talk about in this video so that way you can take a further look and find out some more information. Next up we have the Kevin aka Sam Belted Z Ender 3 conversion. This is not a Core XZ like the Switchfire but it does get rid of the single lead screw replacing it with a dual sided Belted Z which will help to remove Z banding as well as increase your Z travels and Z hopping speeds. There are quite a few options with this mod like keeping the original uh, roller wheels or going with linear rails as well as doing a single motor, low profile motors or uh, two dual, dual motors so that way you can actually tram your gantry. And we did install this mod over on the ModBot Army channel. It was a ton of fun. The documentation is absolutely fantastic. It's gotta be better than just about any documentation I've ever used in 3D printing. Like major hats off to not only making a fantastic mod, but just documenting the hell out of it. So that way really anybody that wants to do the mod can do that mod. The creator is awesome and very active in his GitHub. So if you have any questions or want to find out more, that is a great place to go. He also has a handful of other mods like the Clack Ender, which allows you to use the clicky style setup with the stock Ender 3 gantry in a really elegant way. And he's working on a quad idex uh, setup that's just absolutely insane so uh, if you're looking for some cool ender 3 mods i highly recommend checking out the work that he's done and we'll have that also again linked in the description next up we have the micro swiss ng hot end and extruder combo this isn't a full like motion system conversion like some of these other mods but it is a very cool upgrade made specifically for the ender 3 that you can use with the stock rollers or if you upgrade your x-axis to a linear rail uh, i'm currently using it on the ender 3 v2 that i upgraded to the kevin aka sam belted z mod as well as on another ender 3 that i'm probably going to modify to Probably gonna do another one of those Kevin AKA Sam belted mods as well, but uh, it is a very cool hot and extruder combo and definitely worth checking out. The Exoslide motion system is one I've played around with previously and I've quite enjoyed using for a couple of reasons. One, it's really easy to model different attachments for it. This little cable management setup right here is one on the back you can't see as well, are ones I was quickly able to crank out because of just how simple it is to model based off of the many mounting points on these. On top of that, they're also compatible with just about any 3D printer that's using the standard aluminum extrusions, which makes it really convenient. This is the Ender 3 Pro that I picked up off of eBay as a return, and the Y-axis, the X-axis, and the Z-axis have all been converted to the Exoslide motion system, and it's using their Z-axis belted system, which is similar in a sense to the Kevin AKA Sam mod, where it's not a Core XZ, but it does support your gantry on both sides with a belt, giving you much faster Z hop Z travel movements and to remove any of the Z artifacts or Z banding that you can get from a lead screw. You can use this with the stock Creality extruder and hot end, but they did recently release the Exoslide extruder and hot end, which is pretty sweet, and I'm going to be covering it in a separate video. Um, but this extruder also has the option to work with E3D's Revo system. There's a small adapter. So if you're trying to sort of convert all of your 3D printers over to Revo, so that way you can quickly swap out nozzles, that is also an option for this as well. Then we have the Ender 3 IDEX mod by Send 3 d I first discovered this project when I was looking at some information on converting the BQB1 I had into an IDEX 3D printer. I was using some of the uh, G code that was provided by SEM to make the mirror mode and duplication mode work correctly. But this is a very cool conversion that will take your Ender 3 and turn it into an IDEX uh, independent dual extrusion 3D printer. This will allow you to print with two colors, water soluble support material, or even two materials with different size nozzles. It's available as a full kit where Sen will actually send you all of the components that you need and you'll just configure everything and attach it to your printer or you can purchase the files to print everything out and get it set up yourself. But the documentation that I've seen as far as the step-by-step -step video format and the firmware and slicer information is absolutely phenomenal. And if you have an Ender 3 that's just kind of collecting dust and you're interested in dual extrusion, this is a sweet way to 
breathe a whole different set of life into your Ender 3 and really open up possibilities for some crazy different prints. Last but certainly not least is the belted Ender 3 conversion kit. I've seen a couple of variants of this over the last year or two, but got to check out the Additiva kit at Murph in person. At $320, this is an impressive kit and much less than the off-the-shelf options out there that I've seen like the Creality CR30 or the SaneSmart Infi 20. The parts included are metal and not printed and contains everything that you'll need as far as the firmware and slicer options to get you up and running. This is another one of those if you have an Ender 3 that's not doing a whole lot, it is a pretty sweet way to be able to print large prints, whether it's cosplay stuff or continuous prints, if you just want to continually print something out, whether it's for your own personal projects or whether you're looking to sell something, the belted Ender 3 conversion looks like a great option. And that concludes my list of awesome Ender 3 mods as of today in 2022 and some of the ones that I've kind of been looking at and either again played with myself or ones that I'm hoping to be able to play with at some point. The Ender 3 might not have all of the shiny bells and whistles of a lot of the 3D printers that are out there, but thanks to all of these amazing mods that are being released by both manufacturers and the community, there is still so many things that you can do with the Ender 3 that if you buy one, outgrow it, you can convert it into a completely different machine with all sorts of different capabilities. Let me know in the comments down below how many of you either own a Ender 3 at this point, some variant of it, or have owned one at one point or another. There is an insane amount of us out there. And also, I'm always trying to keep my ear to the ground, but if there are any awesome projects that I didn't cover in this video, as I was wrapping up this video, I realized I didn't mention the Recreator 3D, which it converts the 3D printer into not a 3D printer anymore. It's, it's a very cool project that was covered quite extensively at Earth, but basically allows you to take PET water bottles and an Ender 3, and you convert the Ender 3 into what's essentially a filament creator. It can take those, those empty water bottles, shred them down and extrude them. Three, at least three people I know have done videos on the project, so I can have that linked in the description down below. But if there are any other projects out there too that you think are worth checking out that I didn't mention in this video, please let me know because I'm interested and I'm sure there are many others out there that are interested as well. On that note, don't forget to like and subscribe for more great videos. We make a video every single week, so there's always fresh content coming your way. And if you do want to support the channel furthermore, I'll have links down below in the description over to our Patreon where there are some really awesome rewards. Huge thank you to all of our existing Patreon supporters I appreciate each and every one of you for allowing me to come back every single week and spend more time doing what I love, which is making content for you all to enjoy. On that note, this has been Dana from ModBot, and I look forward to seeing you guys in my next video. Peace, guys!